My name is Martin Beelan and I am I'm the owner of Global Village Restaurant here, where we are. Uh, I've been cooking for 35 years um, and 22 of those here at the restaurant, here at the, I opened my own place. Yeah, so in the future I can see the role of the chef changing, however fundamentally it will stay, stay the same because what we do, at the core of what we do, you're down to you, your knife, your board, your ingredient, your process. And that's, that fundamentally won't change because that's what each chef does as he comes in, starts his day, he begins to work. Now, we'll change some of the processes to help ease things, reduce labour, um, get more efficient and possibly better outcomes. I think one of the um, most important uh, things for young chefs now is going to be that um, the environmental impact. I think it's, got, it's, and I say chefs, it's going to be for everybody. If we don't start to think about it this, and well actually maybe stop thinking about it and start doing something about it very quickly, we're going to be too late. In, in, in terms of fundamentally what we do every day, I genuinely believe there's going to be a fundamental shift to plant-based eating in the next 20 years. And I'd say it's going to take people by storm. It, 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 people, you know. So our entire agricultural model is going to have to change. And it'll be young entrepreneurs who see that and they'll, they'll become the nut farmers and the seed farmers and, the, and, and, and all of that, the, the replacement food farmers. Because that, that's where we're going to have to go. We can't continue to eat this much protein. There aren't, you know, we're, going, we're out fishing the oceans. We're overfishing the oceans. We are poisoning the land through over-intensive farming to give people too much protein. So if the chefs of the future are going to have to have ready, be ready for a plant-based diet, and they're going to have to be ready to justify their actions in terms of their energy input and output and, what, and, and their food waste, and wh where their food came from, how much miles it travelled, and what, the, what happens to the waste and how everything is regenerated in, in a circular Organic, and preferably organic system. Well, first of all, the title chef, the same title is in every single business that somebody puts one of these uniforms on. So if you go in and you're, you literally fry chips all day long and go home with absolutely no other impact or input into the menus or into the nutrition or the hospitality of your customers, you still, get, you still can call yourself a chef. And I think they're going to have, there's going to have to be some strategic changes in that, in where people use the term and how qualified you must be to use the term. So if we're looking at qualifications across Europe, we must look at a situation where somebody, if they dedicate themselves to local produce, if they dedicate themselves to traditional methods, and if they dedicate themselves to using um, everything around them in the best and most nutritional way possible to make the customer feel extremely special and basically be entertained because we are in entertainment we are not in retail we are in hospitality and entertainment so if if somebody is doing that and flying the flag for their country every single day there's going to have to be a change in how that person is treated perhaps with tax breaks, perhaps with extra grant aid or some way, that because they are literally flying the flag for the country and genuinely making a genuine impact on tourism and GDP. Chefs are getting better and better and better, but then we have other ones that are basically staying where they left, left college. And I suppose they're both unnecessary, but what we're going to have to do is train for both models. We're going to have to have, have the line cook scenario where, where you train the guy to cook a perfect piece of steak and he repeats that. And they talk about robotization. I mean, to be perfectly honest, <laughs> what they're doing and have been doing for a long time is turning people into robots in that situation. They're going in and repeating the same task. And they say, oh, well, we can, get a, we can get a robot to do that. But what is the point of that? We have seven billion people to, to, to engage with every single day and give them meaningful work and nutrition and life. And, and you know, why not give that to the people that exist rather than trying to replace them with machines? But you'll never replace the dumb. You'll never replace the passion and the caring because it's a job that you must work with your hands, your head and your heart. And once you put the three of those together, you won't create a robot to do that job. You know, 
what will change or what will have to change is work-life balance because the work-life balance of chefs has gone completely out of kilter. There's a number of reasons that that has happened, which I'll come around to again, and they're basically around the amount of things expected of a modern chef. Um, and I suppose that's reflected all over society. People are working harder and longer all the time and getting uh, the work-life funds more difficult. But it's particularly prevalent and particularly difficult in our business because of the anti-family errors that we work. They're not necessarily anti-social. They're often far too social. But they are very anti-family.